Welcome back to Carson Tate's Video Log. We're still here in sunny Palm Springs, and I have here with me new Bold Strokes author, Robin Silverman. Hi, Robin. Hi. That's all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so your new book is called Lemon Reef, and when does it come out? It comes out uh, July 16, 2012. Well, I have to tell you, I heard a preview of it last night, and that's not soon enough. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. No, it was really excellent. Thank you. So, um, is do you know if there's an excerpt up on the Bold Strokes site yet? There's I, not, not that I know of. Okay, any day now, Chapter One will be up on Bold Strokes website, so y'all should check it out. So this is kind of a, it's a very interesting perspective because you've got, it's kind of a romance told backwards. That right, uh, or told within, with right, uh, retros retrospectively. Um, it's it's an adolescent it's a, it's a story about two adolescent girls um, a love story of, between two adolescent girls that's told retrospectively in the context of a, a present day mystery about one of their deaths very interesting and it kind of opens with one of the death and then you find out what happens I right, exactly. good because I'd like to know <laughs> so what inspired the idea for the book oh I, I think um, a combination of um, things my own personal experiences and also uh, my, my work, my career as a psychologist working with families of domestic violence. And yeah, you have a really rough job. Because, you know, I do criminal defense and occasionally some attorney will come to me and say, hey, I've got some family law work and I've got some more, more than I can handle. You want some? And I'm like, no. <laughs> because that's really rough stuff. I'd rather deal with murder and arson and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> right. We can't keep judges in family law. I mean, you know, right, right. So how did you get into that? Um, well, by starting as a psychologist um, and working with uh, kids and kids and, fa and, and parents, um, and then um, I went to law school and I um, started working for the family court in Alameda County as a uh, child custody. So they appoint you to cases, like, or recommend you to cases? Um, no, no, um, I'm, I'm part of family court services. Oh, okay, so I'm employed I see. By okay. The court. Oh, excellent. And we don't have to run a big law discussion. Anyway, um, so that's interesting. I'm just not familiar how, how they do it out here. But sure. That's cool. So do you, what do you enjoy most about it? Um, I think I think um, the, the um, sense of um, of um, of influence, being able to um, have an effect on kids' lives and parents' lives, pretty immediately. So, what do you enjoy most about writing? It gives me, I think, an opportunity to work through things that have happened to me and have a better understanding of them, share experiences, kind of tap into what's more universal about um, you know in all of us, um, and also the ways in which we're different. So I wrote my book, first book, Late in Life. Um, it, are you that way too, or do you have like a stack of manuscripts? Well, no, I don't have a stack of manuscripts. Good, because I'd beat you up if you did. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what made you sit down and write this first one? Um, I, I you always wanted to write a book. I, I was in law school and and um, and I. You I, didn't feel like listening to constitutional exactly. law, so you started typing a novel. You got it. <laughs> That's what happened. I'm so there. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> kind of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, yeah. I took up a lot of class time, um, but it was it was really a, um, it was it was uh, kind of inspired by. Um, uh, by, by, by experiences of, of uh, people I knew and, um, other, and, and people I worked with. So have you finished editing? It's all out of your hands now? No, I'm now doing edits, um, my final edits. And um, your editor thinks it's great. I just know she told me that. So what are you going to work on next? Um, I'm a, a novel, um, uh, something a little bit different. Um, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Well, I don't, don't cry it out of you. I don't know how much, how much detail to go into. Um, Give us like the blur. It's, it's, a, it's, about, um, it's about a group of friends in San Francisco um, who are uh, living their lives in the, uh, in the um, shadow of a, tra of a tragedy and a, a kind of a, um, a catastrophe. And it's the way that people just sort of bog down and do the thing that they care the most about um, as a way of protest. Just living your life and doing what you need to do and taking care of what you want to take care of and care about even though there's really, you know, hard things happening around you. Gotcha. Okay, well, we'll look forward to you have a working title. Um, the Invisible Side of Things. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. And do you find h titles hard to come up with or? Um, so, uh, no, no. Uh, my partner, my former partner, uh, gave me the name for Lemon Reading. 
So I didn't come up with that, actually, that title. And this one, um, I... Slacker. <laughs> yeah. And this one I, 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 I've had on my mind for a while. It's a, it's a, um, it's a quote from, not exactly a quote, but an idea from this uh, philosopher, French philosopher, and I like him, and I sort of took a line from him. Which philosopher? Um, um, you know, there's so many. You know, Those darn French. Um, Camus, Sartre. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's not a quiz show. It's okay. <laughs> so we're going to think of it as soon as we turn off the tape. So, okay, so Lemon Reef in the July. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then buy, go ahead and pre order it now because it's totally worth it. And then um, The Invisible Side of Things sometime. And we'll be watching for that. And this is Robin Silverman. And thanks for joining us. And this is Carson Tate's Video Log signing out.